We have a lot to cover today between NHL trade and free agent rumors. We're looking at a lot of teams, including the Montreal Canadiens, the Edmonton Oilers. We have a potential deal between San Jose and Minnesota, another potential deal between Calgary and Philadelphia. We have some other updates on the trade rumor front as well. Plus, we have several goalie signings today, some big contracts, including Robin Leonard and Tristan Jerry, and we have a buyout to discuss as well. We'll jump into all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, and as you can see, we have a lot to talk about, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right in here. There's a lot of news in today's NHL rumor and news front. So let's start here with the goaltender signings that we saw today. We saw the first big one was Robin Leonard, the Vegas Golden Knights, signing a five-year $5 million contract. Now, that's something we had reported on uh, a number of weeks ago, indicating this was already agreed to, uh, even though the um, the team and as well as the player had denied the fact that this was in place. Turns out it was exactly true, exactly as we had heard and exactly as we had reported here on the channel before. So, obviously, that now becomes official. Pen to paper. Deal is done. So, you can't help but wonder what that means for Mark andre Fleury. We've heard rumblings that the Golden Knights are not really keen on buying him out. Also heard rumblings that they're not really keen on trading Flurry and retaining salary. So I'm not really sure how they intend to move them. And I also don't see how they can keep both of them with their salary cap issues that they have and kind of, you know, fill up the rest of the roster here and make some other moves that they're rumored to be looking at. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with the goalie front in Vegas. But, but right now they have $12 million tied up between two goaltenders. And I guess we will see what happens. But there is still a lot of people that expect Flurry to move. It's just a matter of how it happens. But... I'll be surprised if another team takes him on at his full cap hit, but stranger things have happened, so we'll have to wait and see on that front. Now, the Penguins have also signed RFA goaltender Tristan Jerry to a three-year deal, valued at $3.5 million per year. I think that's a pretty fair contract. He will be a UFA when the contract expires. Uh, they are getting one of his UFA years bought up throughout this deal because he would have been UFA in two years at this point, so at least taking him a little bit longer here. I think based on how he played last year, it's a fair contract, good value, and overall, uh, you know, this certainly, uh, I think, indicates the end of Matt Murray in Pittsburgh. The fact that Jerry's contract's done first just kind of solidifies the fact that Murray will be moving. Just a matter of where he goes. There's been so many teams in the Golden Carousel and Rumor Mill about uh, you know, making acquisitions either through trade or free agency. But I think they're going to have a hard time uh, making this trade uh, just because there's so many goalies on the free agent market. There's obviously a few less today than there were before because of the signings here. But still... Uh, I think teams would rather get somebody in free agency so they don't have to give up an asset if possible. So a good deal for Jerry. We'll see what happens with Murray. Uh, difficult to say exactly where he ends up at this point, but I do expect him to be traded sometime in the next few days. Now also on the goaltending front as well, we saw Brian Elliott of the Philadelphia Flyers a re-up with them for another year at $1.5 So that gets a, a bit of a salary reduction compared to last year. Not drastically, but still, I think he played that role as Carter Hart's backup just fine. Uh, it doesn't make sense, I don't think, for Philly to really try to really find a better option for what their budget would be for a backup goalie. So I fully suspected that to happen. We talked about that just a few days ago. The Flyers off-season plan video that we just put out, I indicated I thought Elliott would re-sign short-term, cheap money. Exactly what played out here. And the Jets also had kept uh, Laurent Brossois on, on uh, as their backup goalie to Connor Hellebuck as well. So there's, you know, four teams that kind of, you know, making progress or, or solidifying their goaltending situation for next year. But there's still some moving parts with those teams as well. So it's going to be a crazy goaltending carousel as we head into October 9th into free agency as well as the draft and the trades. I mean, that's coming here in just a few days' time. Now, we also saw a buyout today, which was the Coyotes and putting Michael Grabner on unconditional waivers for the purpose of buyout. He had one year left on his contract. Uh, if you take a look here, I'll put it up on the screen, the buyout calculator looks in, looks like they're going to have a cap hit reduction for this year to about 800000 and then they'll have some dead space next year on 1.2, so it frees up a roster spot, does free up a little bit more salary for the current year, so with them trying to trade Oliver Ekman Larson, is there maybe... Some possibilities here that they're trying to free up some space to take on a contract coming back. I mean, certainly seems quite possible to me, but by no means is that necessarily 100% linked. That's just my speculation, but I guess we will see. Uh, I guess uh, from there we'll segue into the uh, rumor mill when it comes to trades and free agency, and we'll start with the latest on the Oliver ekman Larson front. It looks as though basically it is definitely down to Vancouver and Boston and that he's not going to expand 
the list of teams that he'll accept a trade to. At least that's what Craig Morgan, the Coyotes insider, has indicated and expects to see. So it's either he goes to Vancouver, he goes to Boston, or he quite possibly stays put. And a lot of that's going to depend. Now, we reported yesterday from Rick Dollywall, who covers the Canucks, that uh, there's a, an offer from the Canucks on the table, and they're waiting to hear back from the Coyotes. And, of course, we don't have any announcements yet, so I don't know for sure what's happening. But uh, And we don't know exactly what's in the offer. But it's led to believe that, obviously, there would be at least a first-round pick in there. There would be at least one solid prospect defenseman, either Rafferty or Rathbone, uh, as well as probably, you know, it wouldn't be so shocking to see a player like Jake Vertanen in there. And then they would also have to take back a contract uh, that's going to help the Canucks with their cap situation for at least the next one or two years. But it's not believed to be Louis Erickson. We have several Canuck reporters indicating that Louis is not included, which I've, re- I've speculated that I would hope for their sake that he would be. But it looks as though that's not the case. It looks as though Erickson's not included. They are still trying to move him. His agent's trying to find him a new home, but not in this deal. It's believed that it was probably Brandon Sutter uh, and or a combination of other players that could have shorter-term contracts. Maybe a Jay Beagle, I'm not really quite sure. But I would think Sutter was the main veteran guy that would be in there. But I've seen Connect reporters indicate that from what they've heard, that it would only be players uh, that would be looking at you know shorter-term contracts. It's not Louis. Uh, and that they'd obviously they have to take some money back if they want the uh, to be able to absorb his full cap. It otherwise the Coyotes are going to have to retain. And the reports I'm seeing indicate that they're not really keen on that. I think they'd rather take back a contract that satisfies that instead. That way they're only tied to that for one or two years instead of the duration of his contract. So right now I still look sounds like that the Canucks are the heavy heavy favorites here. I think they can put together a great package, but at the same time. You know, we'll have to wait and see. There's nothing that's done. They say it's not done till it's done. Well, as of I record this video, at least, it is not done. But we'll see if something happens here uh, in short order. Because I believe that everybody involved kind of wants to see if they can get this done quickly so they have a better indication of where their team's going to be at when it comes to cap space and roster-wise before they get into the uh, free agency timelines here. So stay tuned for more updates. It could be one of the big names on the move here as we approach the uh, the silly season, as we say, in the NHL. Now, as we just got done talking about Michael Grabner being bought out, there is rumors of another potential buyout, and that's Columbus Blue Jackets forward Alex Wenberg. Now, uh, Aaron Portsline of the Athletics reporting that they are trying to move Wenberg. Of course, he got a long-term deal a couple years ago, uh, really has not lived up to it, and uh, apparently they're exploring trading him. But if they can't find a trade, it looks as though that's going to be tough to do. Uh, unless they do a salary retention, but even then, it's difficult to say. Obviously, nothing's happened yet, so they can't be having too easy of a time with it. Uh, that they could consider doing a, a Wenberg buyout if indeed they can't find a trade. So that's another player to keep your eye on who could become a UFA. Uh, obviously, would adjust the uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets salary cap space, and it would also put another player on the UFA market as well who can play center. So maybe he gets a cheaper contract with a lower role somewhere else and. Maybe he can find his game and have a little bit better success. But the Blue Jackets are a team that many expect are desperately looking for scoring. We can confirm as well from numerous reports that they are shopping both goaltenders. Even heard uh, comments from their GM, Yermo Kekalainen, talking about the fact that they moved a goaltender, how it would look and that kind of thing. So, so Elvis and Corpus Allo are both definitely on the market. They'll entertain trading either one depending on what they can find for a trade coming back. Uh, and there's plenty of teams out there, as we know, uh, looking for goaltending or goaltending shakeup. So wouldn't be surprised if one of them is moved as long as they can find a scoring a forward coming back. Um, so and if they buy at Wenberg, they may even prefer somebody who can play center ice as well. So I mean, they're not real deep down the middle, as we know, after Dubois kind of drops off. I mean, Jenner's a decent center, but not really overly offensive. They could use um, a number two center who certainly, you know, can provide more offense. And if they can't get that, then they're going to want a higher scoring winger at, at the very least. But it kind, of, it kind of depends on what's out there for sure. Uh, Dubois is another contract they need to look after in Columbus. So there's lots of things going on there. And Kekalainen is going to be extremely busy. Now apparently the Sharks and Wild trade that was sent goaltender Devin Dubnik is still in the works. And could take a few days to complete. But it's very much likely to go through by the sounds of things. Uh, Devin Dubnik does have a partial no trade. The Sharks are not on it is what we've been able to confirm so far. So there's nothing that prevents them from happening. But even though they could be uh, completing this trade without his consent, apparently the Sharks, uh, I think, wanted to make sure that he was going to be okay with it. Obviously, you know, kind of do like they, what they did with Eric Carlson before he was moved from Ottawa. They want to kind of, you know, present them as a 
as an organization, what the lifestyle is going to be like and all that before, you know, make sure the player is going to be happy and sure the player is going to want to go there and be happy, be productive, you know, adjust family wise and all that. There's certainly, you know, it's a big deal. Uh, and we know Dubnik's actually gone through some a lot personally as well in the past year. So, you know, that could certainly make a, a you know, a big part of that decision. So before that deal gets finalized, they're likely spending some time on the personal side of things just to make sure that he's going to be good with it before they execute the trade. But obviously if he departs and that's going to be a lot of the, uh, you know, longtime veterans there in Minnesota finding their way out the door. So Bill Guerin's well on his way to changing the culture and changing the look of the team here longer term. But we should get more on that deal in the next few days. Since the Edmonton Oilers are apparently out on Oliver Ekman Larson because he won't waive to go to the Alberta team or the provincial rival the Calgary Flames, uh, the Oilers are looking at other options on the defense front. Uh, the same type of defenseman. Apparently, they're looking at Tyson Berry in free agency. It, to be honest, might be a better way for them to go anyway, given their cap situation. Uh, Barry would be a player who they could sign much cheaper, shorter term. He's coming off a not-so-great season after an experiment in Toronto that didn't really work out. Um, so they could probably get him on a prove-it-to-me contract or a kind of reprove himself kind of deal where he can take a shorter term, uh, less money, and then hopefully cash in in a year or two time. Uh, you know, when things are hopefully better financially in the NHL. But Barry certainly being looked at by the Oilers and heavily considered as an option in free agency, especially with Cloughbaum being out. They're going to want somebody who can take on some bigger minutes uh, and play an offensive role, play in the power play. And Tyson Barry very well could be that guy. So we'll see uh, what happens and how that develops as well. And they're also in heavy discussions with a contract extension for Ryan Nugent Hopkins, uh, who's looking at a longer term, probably seven or eight year contract. I'm not sure the exact annual value that we're looking at, but it's believed to likely be, I think, somewhere between seven, seven and a half around there is what is being reported or rumored so far. So we'll see how that goes. But it's quite possible that this contract could extend Nugent Hopkins well into either near the end or, uh, you know, to the very later stages of his career and keep him to be with the Oilers throughout that entire time. So I think that'd be a good move. They can get him at the right price and lock him up longer term as well. They've got Leon, they've got Connor McDavid, you know, locked up longer term. Then that gives them some real core pieces in their forward group to kind of build around. But we could likely see them move out uh, some other forwards as well for a combination of shedding some salary as well as kind of creating more you know, of an opportunity for those some of those players because they do have a lot of wingers now. And I think they'd like to find a way to upgrade. They've been linked to Jake DeBrus quite a bit. Uh, so that's another possibility we could see depending on what Boston does. And if they get OBL or if they go in another direction, they might want to move DeBrus because I've seen several NHL insiders indicate that DeBrus's name is out there a lot. So obviously... He's a player who could be going to Edmonton, but on the right side, they've got several guys. I mean, there's rumors about Alex Chason possibly going to Boston. And if he doesn't go to Boston, he could end up going somewhere else. I mean, obviously, they've got Cassian, they've got Yamamoto, they've got James Neal. Uh, so there's more than enough players to play on that side of the ice as well. Um, so we'll see what the Oilers decide to do, but they could end up moving out one or two wingers here uh, to try it, especially if they're going to make an attempt to bring in another higher scoring, more effective winger like a DeBrusque or somebody else. But there's still another team like many here that are expected to be quite busy in the coming days. Now the New Jersey Devils also have three first round picks and there's a lot of talk that they'd be willing to move at least one, if not two of those first rounders. They'd likely keep their own pick, but the other two that they have that belong to other NHL teams that are lower in the first round uh, are possibly up for grabs, especially if it's going to help them guarantee themselves a nice uh, solid top four defenseman now one player that they're kind of been speculated to maybe looking at that they would consider doing a trade for would be mikhail sergachev of, of tampa which i know that tampa probably does not want to move but as we mentioned before julian breezeball is going to have his work cut out for him because uh, they have so many players that have a no move clause that it's going to be challenging for him to be able to move the right pieces and keep sorelli and sergachev in the mix and he may not have a choice but to trade one of them Obviously, like I think they're going to do everything they can to keep them. But if it gets to that point that they're willing to consider that, New Jersey would likely offer up a first rounder and maybe even something else on top of that to get a top 4D because their blue line could certainly use some work. And if they can get a guy like Sergeyev back there, they're going to lead the power play with some of the young forwards they have. That would be a great step in the right direction. But if it's not Sergeyev, it could be somebody else. They have a lot of draft currency, a lot of stock there, and there's three first rounders. And they're certainly open to trading at least one maybe even more if it's going to get them some impact players that can help right away. Now, the Montreal Canadiens are also apparently looking at bringing back Ilya Kovalchuk through free agency. Of course, we saw the Habs acquire Kovalchuk partway through last year. It seemed like an experiment that worked really well. They shipped him off to Washington for a shot at a Stanley Cup. 
before the season was paused. Of course, they didn't know they'd end up in the playoffs themselves because it was not looking like that was going to happen. So if they traded him away, they get a pick in return. Uh, they send him to Washington. It's kind of like a favor because of all the teams that were looking at him. Uh, they give him a chance to play with his buddy, Alex Ovechkin. Many believe that there was a great relationship there and that it was kind of like almost like a handshake agreement. Is like, we'll help you out now, send you to a, a chance to win with one of your friends. You come back and re-sign in free agency and kind of, you know, keep things going from there. So it is fully suspected that they could look to do that. Uh, of course, there's been heavily rumored that they're willing to trade their first round pick for an impact scoring forward as well. So I do expect Mark Bergevin to be, you know, busy, but we'll see what happens when it comes to Kovalchuk. But many believe that he will resign a short-term contract to return to the Habs here once October 9th hits. Now, there's another rumor I want to touch on quickly as well when it comes to the podcast missing curfew with three NHL former players uh, with Jimmy Hayes, Shane O'Brien, and Scotty Upshaw. Uh, Jimmy Hayes has been a guy who's been spreading a lot of rumors between his podcast as well as his Twitter account, uh, and now he's talking about another one. Of course, we talked about one the other day, which seemed to be pretty crazy, which would involve the Senators and Rangers involved in the first-round pick and Brady Kachuk, which, as I mentioned when we talked about it, seemed kind of crazy and i don't think they had any chance of happening and it's the only reason we're even giving them any credit at all is because of who they are and the fact that they would be well connected people within nhl circles so i do expect them to have some reliable information but uh, this one here is a trade that would involve the calgary flames and the philadelphia flyers which would take johnny gaudreau from calgary to bring him back home to play with the philadelphia flyers in exchange for shane goss's bear and jake Vorchak. now to me, that uh, obviously seems to be a little bit of an uneven trade, but at the same time, it's the Flyers sending out a lot of money to the Flames, which is going to be challenging for them to have. Now, it wasn't just it was it wasn't just Gaudreau though. It was Gaudreau and something else. He just didn't know what the something else was. I mean, there was a player like Noah hannafin has been heavily talked about in the rumor mill lately. Uh, maybe it could be him. Maybe it could be something else. I don't know. But uh, and it would also be likely a prospect going from Philly to Calgary as well. Some salary retained something else in there to kind of even things out because that wouldn't be quite an even trade when it comes to dollars and value and all that. But obviously Johnny Gaudreau has been heavily rumored to be heading back to uh, the New Jersey Philly area for a long time. It's been a lot of rumors about Calgary shaking things up. Uh, obviously they've had a lot of playoff disappointments with the current group of core players. So I kind of see where the, where the rumor is coming from. And after the Flyers having another playoff blunder, not getting overly far, uh, I can see a player like Jake Voracek maybe being considered as well. He does get paid an awful lot of money and obviously not getting the job done in the playoffs you know, does usually result in some changes coming. Now the thing here as well is none of these players have a no trade clause either. So if you look at all their contracts, they're, none of them have any kind of uh, protection in that regard. So this, this kind of trade could actually take place without any of them having any say over it. So uh, we're not going to give this rumor a lot of stock just because of the last Jimmy Hayes rumor, how that one seemed kind of crazy. And I guess it's still early to tell if indeed it had anything to it. We'll find out by the time we get to the draft. But it's certainly a bit of a crazy concept. Uh, I can see maybe some of these players being on the move. I'm just not sure before each other. But I guess over the next probably week or so or more, we'll kind of get a better idea just how reliable his information is seems to be so i guess like i said if it wasn't for him being a former player i wouldn't give this much stock but we'll see it's just something fun to talk about for right now if it was coming from an elliot freeman or darren drager pierre lebrun i'd probably give it more stock but i guess we'll see just let me know what your thoughts are on this flyers flames deal that apparently jimmy hayes thinks is going to happen do you think that this kind of deal would make sense would you do it if you're a fan of either team i'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments and we'll discuss further if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.